let's see if we can find delta G for this reaction. So what's the first step, do you think? Uh, I'm going to say split it up into half reactions. Okay, so let's split it up into half reactions. So I've got the iron, and it's going to go to iron 2 positive. I see the iron here going to the iron 2 positive, plus 2 electrons. I do not have to play any nasty games like oxygens and hydrogens. Nope. And then the copper 2 positive is going to go to copper, and that'll be plus 2 electrons. I like this one because Yay, guess what? It's two and the two. electrons cancel, so N in this case will be two. two. So it be Fe plus Cu2 positive. You don't actually need this, but no, for the reaction. It it. Plus, oh yeah, Fe2 positive. It but canceled, it's but we didn't know that it would actually balance. Right. And so now we do need to look up the values for the voltages for this. Yes, we do. So let's back go back a couple of table. screens. And so we have copper to copper plus two. Uh -huh. So let's see, where is that Here. one? Right no, nope, that's, that's the wrong one. Uh, Oops, I have the wrong ink color for this, don't I? Still looking, still looking Mr. for S copper. You guys have probably already seen it right now. Why can't they see it? Oh, there it is, sticking from the top on the right-hand side. Point, Point three four for the copper one. Okay. So the copper one is 0 0.34. The iron to iron 2. Okay, now this is, what we're going to see though is iron 2 to iron, so we're going to have to flip this one because these are all reductions. I see it right here, Mr. Sam. There it is. Yep, point. So that's negative 0.44, but we need to flip it, so it's going to be positive 0 0.44. 0 0.44. So that adds up to 70. 0.78. Yep. Now, folks, we're going to use this cool equation. Delta G equals negative N F E naught. Yep. Now, so, shouldn't there be a little zero above that G as well? Since it's standard yes, electrical it's a, potential, it yes. should be our standard. Now, we are making an G. assumption. What assumption are we making? That everything is at standard conditions. Which One is, molar solutions yeah. and um, 25 degrees Celsius for right. atmosphere. N was 2, right? Yep. Times F, which is 96,485. 96, I don't that, know why I remember that number. And then E0 is 0.78. Now, I'm not putting units on there, but we'll put it at the end here. Mm -hmm. And you get a big number, Mr. Sams. 1, 5. Negative, right? Yep. Negative one five zero five one zero five seven. one seven. That's way too many significant digits. Yeah, it by the way, that's going to be in joules per mole. So if we divide by a thousand, yep, uh, you get negative one hundred and fifty one kilojoules per mole. I could do that in my head. Yep. All right. So that is the value of delta G. There it is. Not terribly difficult. Not at all. Okay. Now what happens? So that's how you, you solve for delta G. Yep. Okay. What All right, it? so on that last problem, folks, um, we found delta G, right? We found delta G to be negative 151 kilojoules yep, per mole. That's G with a little zero on it. G, yeah, thank you. Yep. Um, now, one thing that we've already kind of talked about this in our last unit in mm -hmm. Chapter 16, but I want to make sure you can make this connection, folks. And uh, we forgot to put this in your handout, so why don't you – you're going to have to add this. Okay? So if I want to solve for K, you might remember an equation from Chapter 16, which is delta G equal. naught – is equal to negative RT natural log of K. So if I know the value of delta G naught, I can solve for the equilibrium constant K. Remember for double arrow reactions, right? Well, so I can say, now the important thing to note here is this isn't kilojoules per null, but R, what's R? It's 8.3145 joules per Kelvin mole. So I've got to convert this to joules. Yep. So I'm going to say negative 151 thousand joules per mole is equal to negative 8.3145, I'm not going to put the units in there, times the temperature, we have to pick a particular temperature, so let's say uh, 300 Kelvin or something like that, sure. times the natural log of K. Now how would I al algebraically solve that? Um, I would say divide both sides by 8.3145 and 300. Now uh, when you do that folks, actually negative. Um, yes. Make sure that you divide, divide on your calculator. Yep. Do not say divide and then times. Unless you use parentheses. Unless you're using parentheses appropriately, yeah. And so what we get? What do you get there? Uh, 60.5. We have a negative and a negative, and so that makes it a positive. So 60.5 is natural log of K. And so you have to take t E to the 60.5 to get rid of the natural log. You right. get a big number. You're going to get one point, yeah. 1.95 times 10 to the 26th power. That's a very high number. Now, what does that mean when you have an equilibrium constant that's that large? That it's insanely spontaneous. Yes. It just goes. 
Yes. So K, if K is very bigger, bigger than very bigger than one, very, big. very bigger than one. Mm. If it's much larger than one, then the products are favored. In this reaction, they are very, very favored. Okay. All right. Now, what are we going to talk about now? The Nernst equation. Nernst, Nernst. Mr. Nernst. That sounds like a weird name. Nernst. All right. Mr. Nernst said, what happens if you don't have standard conditions? What if mm. it's not one molar? Yeah. And, and one atmosphere and such. Well, guess what? There's this equation. It's the Nernst equation. Nernst. And so if you have a different concentration, E, notice there's no zero on this E. This E is equal to the E0. That's the number that, from the standard. And this is essentially over here the correction factor. Now, R is a constant. F is a constant. N is those moles and T is the temperature. But if you assume... Uh, a couple of terms. You can assume, um, for example, if you assume that um, R and T, if you assume that T is uh, 25 degrees Celsius, R, T, and F are all um, constants. Yeah. And so this right here, if you assume 25 degrees Celsius, you can rewrite the equation and it looks like this. Now we need to talk about what this Q business yeah, is. Yeah, Q is your uh, your conditions that are not standard. Or your reaction Quotient? Yeah, you're just going to plug in the concentrations. It's just like K, where you have products over reactants, except instead of using the equilibrium products over reactants, you're going to use the non the given yeah. products over reactants. So here's, here is a uh, particular problem. We have a reaction here that I think we need to draw right do balance first. Yeah. Yep. What is the electrical position following cell with the following concentration? So I need to balance really need this to balance? equation. Well, not exactly. We can even just look them up on we our can say VO2 there. positive goes to VO2 positive. How's that for yeah. Okay, but now so we can go back to that uh, table. table, yeah. So if we go back to the table, I can find my VO2. This is the one we couldn't find. Here it is down here. About halfway on the left-hand side. Yeah, I think I see it there. All right, so they're right about here, and it's 1 volt. 1.0, look at that. So um, now I go, so have you got it down, Mr. Sams? So you yep. guys know where we're going to get this. Mr. Sams got the book out, and we'll just use his book. So what are our Ready. options there? Um, tell, me, tell me the whole reaction. You want, oh, you want the whole reaction. Okay, uh, we're going to add two hydrogens and one electron to the left. Plus two hydrogens and one electron mm -hmm. on the right. And on the right, we need one water. Water, okay. Okay. And our second reaction, that was one volt, right? Mm, was it written? Is yeah, it one, one or point, negative? 1.00, one? One positive. Okay. As written. As written. And then the zinc yep. is zinc. going to go to zinc, two positive, yep. plus two electrons. And we can, that's actually, I don't have to do any math on that. Yep. And that's, that's uh, the, um, in the you book. You flipped it. Yeah, in the book it's negative, so we're going to do positive 0.76. So the voltage is, uh, looks like um, 1.76 volts. Now, we do need to then add these reactions, right? Yep. So, we'll need so to, this one we're going to double because yep. we have to get the two electrons to cancel. So this will be 4H positive plus VO2 positive. Two of them. Two of them. I knew that. Plus the zinc metal makes the zinc 2 positive plus VO2 positive. Two of them. Two of them. I knew that. Plus two waters. Let's make sure. Just check. All right. Now we have a balanced equation. There it is. Now the reaction quotient will be the products over the reaction. Right. And so those the, are given to us here. So zinc 2 positive times uh, VO2 positive squared because of the 2 here. Now what do we do with the water there? Uh, it's not really going to participate. Why? So, well, it's not it, It's not an aqueous thing. Uh, these yeah. need to be homogeneous equilibrium. So, yeah. um, so this needs we're to dealing be with ions. And so then we'll say VO2 with a positive 1 charge, kind of weird how that works, times the hydrogen to the fourth to power. The fourth. And the zinc is a solid, right. so we ignore that. So this is the Q. And if you look up here, we're given all these we're numbers. We're just going to plug those numbers in. So we're going to just plug these numbers in, and we're going to solve plug for Q. Plug in, Chuck. Should we... Uh... The zinc 2 positive, 0.1, all right? right. The VO2 positive, we're going to make sure my things right, is 1 times... 10 to the minus 2 squared. I think we'll just find Q first. I think it'll be easier. Yep. And the other VO2, the one with a subscript, is a 2 molar, and we'll square that. And the hydrogen concentration is 0.5, and we'll take that to the fourth power. So, Mr. Sams, when you get that on your calculator? Yep, I got 4 times 10 to the negative fifth. So it's 4 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay. So here we have, what was that number again, Mr. Uh, Sams? It's 4 times 10 to the negative fifth. So uh, Q 